Y paró. ¡Oh! 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 What is happening, people? It is Brian Alzo, never say that come. And no, I am not dead. Yes, I actually got emails asking if Brian had died. I don't really know who was supposed to answer those emails. So for those of you who did not know, a couple months ago, I had to get rotator cuff surgery. I tore my rotator cuff at the national championships. Um, the screws and the anchors inside ended up getting infected. So I got this real big bump on my arm and we had to do an emergency surgery about that because they were worried that I might have a bone marrow infection. All of that went really well. The surgery went well. I have not re-messed up the shoulder. My shoulder actually feels like terrific. It's like 100%. Absolutely no problems with it. All the strengths come back. Um, I have actually done zero rehab whatsoever for it. I've just treated it like a normal shoulder. I don't do my little rehab exercises or anything like that. I just do my normal everyday stuff and my shoulder is completely fine. So um, really looking forward to get back to lifting. But back to my story. So all that went on and uh, the problem was I did end up having a bone marrow infection or a possible bone marrow infection. So what they ended up doing is sticking this pick this pick line in my chest. See, I have this tube that sticks out my chest all the time, and it makes me look like I have a strange, a strange nipple. You're welcome, internet. So this is obviously a very big deal for me, and it has been absolutely life-changing. Each time that I have to give myself needles, I have to give myself needles three times a day, and it's four needles each time. So it takes about 20 minutes to prep everything, get everything done, and do it. So um, by the end of six weeks, I need to do this every single day for six weeks. Um, and it has been three, almost four weeks. We're starting up fourth week. Maybe the fifth, I don't, I don't know, I'll check that. Anyway, um, I've been doing it for a little bit. I actually feel absolutely amazing. Like I said, my shoulder feels great, my body feels great. The only problem is that I've been running a fever ever since I left the hospital. And the infectious disease doctor said it would probably be better that I did not go around people and did not have any interaction with people. I'm not supposed to shake hands. I cannot give hugs. I cannot, really, I'm not supposed to talk to people without a mask on. Um, there are a lot of things that I'm not supposed to do. And I'm taking those things very, very seriously because this is a direct line that goes directly into my heart. So if in when I'm prepping those needles, if I get an air bubble, that is huge, massive trouble. If I blood clot because I force some blood back into this and it ends up clotting and I force it into my heart, a blood clot in the heart is not a good thing for your health. And of course, infection. So they're very, very afraid of infection. I cannot get sick right now. That would be absolutely devastating for me and my immune system. But uh, the cool part about this is whenever you get faced with something, so for you guys who have been with me for a while, you guys will know for a fact that I try to throw a positive spin on just about everything. Um, so that's not very new, but I can say about this, I was pretty negative about this. I This is probably my biggest fear ever is getting a catheter that goes through my veins into my heart. That that is the pretty much creepiest thing ever. And giving myself needles, I'm afraid of needles, not really so much anymore because I haven't so much. Um, but Basically, it, it looked like a really dismal situation for me where they were like, for six weeks, you're not going to leave your house. You are not going to be interacting with people. You're not going to be lifting. You're not going to be working. You're not going to be doing anything for six weeks. And that was pretty devastating. That kind of stuck me in a little bit of depression. I'm not going to lie. Um, just feeling a little sorry for myself, saying like, why did this happen? My, my surgeon actually said the infection that happened is actually the first one he's ever seen this level of infection from uh, surgery. It's the first time it's ever happened in his entire career. So with that in mind... Um, it's, it's just a freak thing that happened. It wasn't because I came back to you sat fast. It wasn't because of anything like that. The cool part is that I actually got the opportunity. How many people actually get a surgery, get to get an MRI of it directly afterwards and then get it opened up and looked at the actual incisions and the actual work that was done inside because the arm was opened back up. So they got to actually look at exactly how my rotator cuff was healing and check it out and it's doing amazing. So I'm super, super stoked about that. But um, I've been kind of gone for a little bit and since I haven't been able to go to the gym, I haven't been able to coach, I haven't been able to teach, I haven't been able to see people, can't even shake a hand. Um, so it's been a little bit of a different experience for me. However, guys, whenever you face something in your life that seems absolutely terrible, the best thing that you can do is lean into it. So for these past couple of weeks, what I have been up to is just trying to take away, figure out why I'm throwing up every day, figure out why my body temperature won't regulate, figure out all these things are going on health-wise, and I have a little bit of time to do that. So basically what I've been doing is every single time that I have to give an infusion, infusion is when I give myself the needles, I write down a list of a bunch of um, everything from my nausea level to my sleep level, because you guys know my sleep problems. Um, I, I list a bunch of things, okay? And um, trying to figure out different factors that might 
be attributing to the nausea or attributing to the whatever the case may be. Um, I've been force feeding myself. I feed myself probably three, four times a day, which I wasn't eating literally. I might eat one meal a day prior to the surgery. Um, barely even that. It was, uh, it was really, really bad. My digestive system was in a really, really bad spot and it's still not in a great spot, but it's definitely improving with all of this. So, um, just really been leaning into it and trying to embrace it. I ended up starting my book that I'm going to be writing. Um, and when I say start a book, I'm not saying that I wrote like three pages. I'm about a hundred pages into this thing. Um, so in reality, I'm hoping that I might be able to knock most of it out within this six weeks. I'm not really sure yet. The book is about a program that I'm coming up with as well as my training mentality and just that kind of thing, almost like a five through one type of book. Um, which should be really, really good. I'm, I'm actually really, really excited about it and something new for my brain to be doing. And then last night I got so excited because I got to go back to the gym. So I'm trying to work my way back in the gym a little bit from time to time. This week I was in there for a little bit Saturday morning. I was in there a little bit last night. Um, just seeing the people I'm really not supposed to. I have to wear a mask. I have to be very, very careful of things. Um, but it's really, really good to see everyone. It's so good to be back to my home, my awesome Never Say It Athletics. I just love being there so much and the positivity and the people just, you guys helped me so much and everything you guys have done to help me over the past couple weeks and all the understanding that you've had is just so, so cool and I thank you so much. I have not even walked into my gym for a couple weeks. Um, I haven't been able to. I haven't just literally haven't been able to because my fever usually floats around 100 to 101 um, and my natural body temperature is 97.3. That's where I am all the time um, and ever since hospital it's just been fluctuating so I have not been able to go into the gym but Uncle Nick's been taking care of class and my wife Elena, brother Dave, just everyone's been picking up the slack. I cannot tell you how much help I've gotten from my wife and all the people from the gym and just Man, I feel so loved and cared about. And uh, when I really got involved in this, when, when I heard that all this was going to have to happen, I went through like a panic attack of if I stop working so hard, because I work 16 hours a day, seven days a week, every day. I do not take days off. I kill it. That's what I've been doing for like four years. Um, and that kind of got me a lot to where I was as far as stress levels and everything else. Just not taking time while I recovery, not taking care of myself. I was putting everything else before myself. Um, so it's been a really good time to kind of step back and reprioritize my life and really figure out what is important to me and what actually matters in life and what doesn't. And uh, I'm trying to make appropriate changes in my life. And that is a great lesson to be learned now. And I swear to you, this is a blessing and surprise be in disguise because I actually, uh, when I was lifting, when I was getting back to lifting there right before this infection happened, when I was getting back, I, uh, I was having trouble keeping myself backed off. Like I kept wanting to push, I kept wanting to push, I kept wanting to push. And I started doing things that were borderline stupid. So, um, I really think that if it were not for this infection, that I probably would have retorn the rotator cuff. And now I think it's healed enough that I can get away with a lot more. Um, so really, I just feel, I'm so thankful that this happened. Um, it is a terrible situation and part of me wishes that it never did, but the life lessons I'm getting from it about my priorities and about how a business should be run and what, what needs to be managed, what doesn't need to be managed, all those things I can use to move forward. And I'm very, very, I'm very, very lucky to have gotten the opportunity to realize this now, this early in my career, this early in my life, as opposed to later, because I think I probably would have spent like the next 10, 15 years just working like a madman and never really uh, stopping to appreciate things and take care of the people that I really care about and uh, the things I really care about. So uh, I truly believe that this is a blessing in the skies. My shoulder is doing great. I, uh, I just really, it's, it's just been such an amazing ride and such a crazy time. Now, what I want to do for this video, um, this video was actually going to be probably like 30 minutes long, but I am not going to do that. I decided against it. Guys, your outreach for wishing me well and trying to take care of me has been so amazing and overwhelming. I've literally probably got dozens of cards in the mail. I've gotten hundreds, maybe thousands of emails of people just wishing me well and asking if I'm okay and ask if there's anything they can do. Um, and then you guys sent gifts. So you guys know we have the new gym expansion up, so um, people are still sending flags. So got some new flags coming in the mail. If you guys want your gym represented, absolutely start sending me some more flags. Um, all kinds of people sent me t-shirts like Matt Mills from Lightning Fitness, one of the best, best gyms, best gyms on the East Coast. Absolutely amazing people there. Um, guys, I, I'm not gonna mention everyone's name because there's just too many. Um, Bunch of t-shirts. You guys can see the one that I've got on here. I've got more. I've got uh, 
a garage gym owner shirt. Guys sent me all kinds of stuff to wear. Guys sent me all kinds of stuff to read because you guys knew that I was going to be spending a lot of time down. Just absolutely amazing. I got everything from, from sweat towels to Yetis, big Yeti coffee cups. I got stickers, I got wooden blocks to carve. I even got a Dremel tool. More wood carving stuff. And then just letters upon letters upon letters. Guys, I am completely overwhelmed and completely grateful and humbled that you guys would take so much of time out of your day, effort, to send me stuff just to help me feel better. That, I, I really can't describe how much that means to me. It is super, super cool. I just, I'm absolutely blown away by the generosity and, and the relationship that all of us have built together. It's just, it's been absolutely incredible, people. I, I really, I, I can't tell you how much it means to me that you guys would reach out and say everything that you did and do everything you did. It's just, Kona. Kona's here with me, of course. But truly, from the bottom of my heart, I just want to say thank you to each and every single one of you. All right, so what is coming up next? This week is actually the week of the Arnold, so I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go to that or not. I actually have an invite from Brian Shaw to go help and be part of his camp. And then, of course, you got... Go get that, Kona. And then, of course, you guys know Uncle Nick won the national championship this year, so he will be competing at the Arnold S200, so I would really like to go coach him. The only issue that I have is that I have not been cleared from the doctors to be part of a mass crowd like that. I'm not even supposed to be part of the crowd at my gym. Kona, you're killing me. You're killing me, dude. So uh, the basic idea is that uh, I need to be very, very careful. If I do go, I would need to pack literally like a cooler of needles because a lot of my medications are uh, refrigerated. So I'm not really sure what the plan is going to be yet. If I am going, I'm leaving in a couple days. Hold on. Kona is killing me. So I'm not even sure if I'm going to be allowed to go, but if I am going to be allowed to go, then I definitely want to because that is an awesome experience. And I absolutely love my time with Brian Shaw and Andy Shido last year. Just so, so cool meeting all the pro Shaw men and being behind the scenes and everything. So, so neat. And I'd really like to experience that again this year. So hopefully, that is going to be happening, but the deadline for that literally is coming down to like now, like yesterday, yesterday probably. Also, I have my very first co-run strongman competition getting ready to go with Joey Satz, who uh, is actually located up at the Lions Den in PA. So the competition is called Lion Sate. There's a couple more spots left, really not too many. So if you guys do want to be part of it, it is in Colmar, PA. If you guys want to be part of it, you guys need to sign up now. Um, but. Pretty much as far as videos coming up, I'm definitely going to do a programming video and then for that competition, I'm going to do a tutorial of every single event of how you can do better, you can improve your performance that day. I'm going to do a tutorial to explain exactly how to unlock all the secrets to these events. Um, so everyone's going to be on a, on a even playing field and it's going to come down to who's worked the hardest. Um, so that is coming up. I'm also going to do a video about the rules of all the events so that you guys know exactly what to expect with down commands, up commands, what will disqualify you, what won't, what will count as a rep, what won't, all that kind of stuff. So it will really hopefully make the day a lot less uh, complicated and confusing than strongman competitions sometimes can be. Um, other than that, other videos coming up. Oh, gym tour. I'm going to do a gym tour. Uh, now that the other side is pretty much done, I'm just going to walk you guys around and show you guys all of that. But all of that is coming up, guys. Um, I don't know if I'll be seeing you later in the week because of the Arnold. If I do not go to the Arnold, you guys definitely will see me. If not, I'll be getting some footage there, trying to get some cool stuff going on. Um, really, really excited to be back. So excited to be back to YouTube. So excited to be back at my gym. So excited to be out of my house. It's going really, really well. Uh, Kona is doing awesome. Thank you all for asking about him. He's sitting right here next to me, being a little punk. So you're getting, you're getting way too big for the camera, man. See how big he is now? It's insane. Say hi to the camera. Say hi to the camera. Oh. So guys, I do thank you so much, and I will catch up with you whenever I catch up with you. Hopefully it's sooner than later. But until I do, go out do something a misery lies. Keep working hard, people. Be nice to each other. Yes, I actually got my voice back, and I'll see you then.